Hey everyone. Good evening. Wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to another music production live stream. Yep, what you're hearing is meld. Meld here. Just meld and a hybrid reverb. No no MIDI devices, no generative um stuff. It's all the pitch quantization. Sounds like uh, <clears throat> like alien bagpipes or something. I might I might do this this evening. I might just make like a generative new age set with meld. And and hybrid reverb maybe. So this is like, it's got the, um, the, the pitch quantization, you can like map to an LFO or modulate by an LFO and you can use like live, live 12's scale locking feature to keep the, keep the pitch in scale in the, in the key of the, the that you set the global scale control to. Give me a, if my voice is a bit strange this evening. I, I, I have kind of not got cold, but my voice is a bit croaky. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this, like this meld device. Really enjoying messing around with it. I think I might do some sound design in it this evening. Just experimentation, just kind of mess around with the controls and stuff, see what sounds I get out of it. I find with like any new synth, it's a bit of a period of experimentation, just like messing around with the controls until you kind of get a feedback loop going. And by that I mean like a knowledge feedback loop, I don't mean a audio feedback loop. Wait, where you can kind of you know what controls do what and how they interact with other controls, you kind of get a broad understanding of it. But I really like this, it's great. Yeah, before I go any further, I'm just going to thank my patrons. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. If you're interested in all that stuff, all the links are in the description, as well as 
links to my Discord. We can hang out with other like-minded music producers. I occasionally jump on there. I'm not particularly active at the moment just because life is very hectic right now, but or has been. Um, yeah, there's lots of other cool people on there. Thanks to everyone who supports me there. Cheers. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of feeling I might just like see what I can get going with just the ver various instances of meld. I have got loads of tunes I could work on potentially, but I don't don't know if I want to do that this evening. Only because I haven't worked on anything for like a week and, or ten days or something, and I kind of feel a little bit out of practice with the create the like the music making side of my brain. So can't, I kind of just want to mess about. So maybe mess about. We will. Maybe we can make like a big um, just self generate like generative ambient set for sleep. I always love that those like unattended modular rigs where the, the, it's just kind of going through a like four hour progression um like state azure the st the the live streamer he does some really cool stuff with like unattended modular gigs performances okay keep an eye on that he was manned so let we'll start again from start again from the beginning here i've literally just got a midi note being played Right, it'd be great if we didn't have to have a MIDI, a MIDI note being played, but let's stop that and let's turn the reverb off. Turn. Let's get rid of meld. Let's start again. Hey, RCS. Oh yeah, the Amiga. So I was like, p part of me is kind of just quite desperate to do an Amigo video with um, Grooving in G's new sample pack, the the Aquatic Dreams one, uh, which George sent me over to have a have a listen to and and comment on actually a, a while back. So yeah, definitely worth a cop. And I I do have an affiliate link for it, which I need to put in the video description at some point. But um, there's, yeah, I kind of just want to chuck these in and the Amigo sampler and, which is very much a kind of internet. It's almost like a music production meme at the moment. I'm just seeing it everywhere. <clears throat> I saw Stranger had done a video on it too. So yeah, my voice is a bit weak tonight. So but yeah, I want to just chuck you know, George's sounds in, in it. I mean, we could do that, but I was kind of wanted to save that for a separate video, but it's, it's pretty sick, the Amigo sampler, and very affordable. It's like 10 quid, a tenner. Um, Taunton, yeah, absolutely. It is based on the on Mike Mundy's automatic music machine. In fact, it is very much that. Yeah, that that is well spot. You know, I think you're the first person that's noticed that, apart, apart from when I say it. But so uh, that's that's good because I don't like to claim credit. But I never, I never, I've I've never or always tried to avoid um, saying that it's kind of my idea or anything or for claiming credit. Rather, rather than I just use it and pointing people towards Mike's content. But um, I think I think his his stuff can be a bit marmite for some people. So, um, but yeah, I love it. It keeps, keeps me totally organized with everything, but I don't really, I don't, I, I, I haven't worked on anything for a while yet. And a lot of stuff is like in draft now. Um, and I kind of feel sometimes working on tunes that I'm literally just pushing, pushing MIDI clips around a lot of the time. Do you know what I mean? Like arranging things here. And so, um, I don't know though, maybe, no, I, I'm going to carry on with the meld thing. <clears throat> if there's anything people want me to do, particularly, just let me know. I'm always up for kind of uh, diving into stuff. But yeah, meld. 
So, so Melda's got like the the whole kind of like pitch quantizer. I don't know if you can do this in anything else, but you can with the global scale control in Live Twelve. And I'm still very much getting used to Live Twelve. I couldn't even find like the clip automation earlier on. It took me, I was like, it's gone. Clip automation is gone. But it was just, it's just because it's up here now, like the envelopes, clip envelopes. Because I wanted to do some, like I was doing some break stuff and wanted to draw some curves in and whatnot but yeah um but it's got this pitch quantization you know global pitch quantization or scale locking for the whole door and you can also um turn that on in some p instruments now i guess i don't know if you what other instruments you can turn it on in that turn it on in actually not other stuff like this no nope Wavetable? No. Meld. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can... So, and I think, like, it is... If you put, say, like... So, say, we're in G minor pentatonic, yeah. Okay. You know, we could just do it in C. We could just do it in C major, right? And if I if I put this on 12, then it's... Or um, 8? Theoretically, it should go like up the scale when I, um, if I just turn off, I'm going to turn off B now. So I've only got the one oscillator on the basic shape. Let, let's, I've got a C, what have I got? What note have I got in here? Let's put this on a C3. So there you go, you can hear it doing its thing. A bit fast, so. The tempo doesn't really matter for stuff like this. So, and here it's just going up and down the sc the scale. Or is it twelve? Okay, so it's twelve. Twelve is a full octave. Maybe if I took it up like 17, it would be minor. That's a minor. Um, and I can also change the change the basic shapes of the LFO. I'm not really sure how everything flows one thing into the next. So I'm by no means an expert using this. I feel like I'm literally just jumping into 12. But um, you could the, you can change the shapes and you can change. It seems that you can change how the LFOs interact with one another. I like this wonder and morph seems to increase like the um, the range of it, if you will. Everything's like locked. It's probably really quiet, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, I think the it's honestly like too too good a deal to miss that um that little amigo sampler from is it um I don't want to get pen. Is it Pendoza? I don't want to get the. What is it? I've got it here. I don't want to get the name wrong. Um, Potenza. Potenza DSP. The Amigo sampler. Yeah, I was just messing with it today. Like the phase offset and the t or like the real time time stretching, which you can automate in clip in in clip. Um, you can automate in the clip view. And and you can also automate like reverse and all this stuff, which I, I don't I don't think you can do I, you can't do that in in simpler or sampler or any, anything you can't like automate the reverse stuff. So I'll definitely have to do a breaks like a chopping but my chop the way I like to chop breaks in it. See see how I get on with it. But um 
yeah, for 10, 10 quid, $10, $11, whatever it is, like it's just a no brainer. That's great pricing. I thought that's really good business sense because you just can't say no to that. That's so cheap or like so not cheap, so, so well priced. And I feel that like, you know, no one's going to, or people would feel that's, that's so reasonably priced that they would avoid share it like file sharing it do you know what I mean like I, I wouldn't just you could easily send that to someone else because there's like no key code or anything even though it is a VST but like you wouldn't because it's just ridiculously cheap Tonton yeah no it's it's like it's saves the the organization system is like everything is built around this I have I've got thousands and thousands and thousands, like, well, not, that's an overstatement. I've got lots. I've, I've There probably is. I realise I'm, I'm a bit behind the chat, but. You have to, like, put this. Yeah, a one thousand and twenty-two items in my sketchbook. That's kind of splurges and stuff that I've got, like sketches. People, people kind of get sketch a bit more if they don't understand this board. But that sketches since twenty nineteen, so that's like over the past, jeez, five years. That can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, like so, lots and lots of musical ideas that I still just kind of keep tracked in here. I can go back and find all this stuff in Dropbox if I want to listen to it, which occasionally I do. And just, I, I just know, okay, I know where the idea is, can dig the idea out, can bring it back into my setup, into, into my board, and I can get working on it again. Thanks, RTS. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Yeah, I I think it can do. Don't know how you do that. I rip. I'm. This is about the microtonal tuning. I think that might be a Max for Life device that can do that. With this some Kalundi Kalundi sequence jungle would be nice. Hey, Ned Rush. <laughs> Probably till half ten, that's kind of what I normally do. Two and a half hours. Autistic brain dump file effects. What, my Trello board? You know, Have you not seen that before? Agon FM. Yeah, okay, so like, like okay, I, I can think more on this, like, with, um, with what? Um... RCS was say, saying then about ideation like whenever I get whenever I get a new bit of equipment or like a new sample pack or something like that and I will do it with George's pack but like I like to kind of like limit myself to using that and to try to create a piece of music using just that thing so I wouldn't dare want to attempt making drums in this synth yet even though I could do it but it feels like you could do that if it's not it doesn't feel like it's here for that or maybe it is maybe we could do some rhythmic stuff classic kind of music producer uh, bipolar attitude okay but it's really nice that these synth effects okay, I know this sounds a bit boring at the moment but like maybe we could so it's just kind of going up the scale at the moment and stuff Of course, you can like um, you can also kind of modulate tuning pitch quantization using like the other LFO, which which is a different pattern, and you can change the the FX. I don't really understand what this m m means yet. Okay, but may maybe like we all know what a random sample and hold does. Maybe we can just make this like really slow. 
I'm gonna have it on like quantize mode though. Make it just like I don't know. I should probably slow the tempo down to like hundred or something. It's like one. Anything you click on, it's going to highlight. Highlight where the control is. Sorting out my levels a bit. What's interesting is it like there's no release on the when it as it changes it's kind of all just applied to that oscillator so it's not like you've got multiple notes but maybe we can work with that as well you know like maybe on this one <laughs> okay so maybe we can have like a highland you know an air a, a gallic air or something I played on the bagpipes with the drone <laughs> um, okay so okay that's fine again there. I'm on the second oscillator to maybe do something different. Um, mm. uh, see tunings in the left hand menu. Tunings. Wow. God, it's loads. And so, how do you load them in? Dial up tone. Yeah, it does sound. This is this is how all all good music sound starts really. Like a dial up tone. I'd love I so I want this one to re-trigger, really. Like if this doesn't work, we can always make Jungle with Amigo. Carry on. I don't know if it, what, I'm trying to think how I'd get something that it, it would have release on the second oscillator so it could just like ping and it almost like build up chords, almost build up chords from the release. Uh, but I don't know if that's 
going to be possible because it's a sustained this is just a sustained c um, but really i think a quick way a quick way to i don't know if i'm going to be able to think my way around this this evening She had something like which is really short, and you know, like if you arpeggiated it, and just like this long. Now with the release on. There is a lot of modulation options, possibly like an overwhelming amount, um, which would probably be useful in time, but like. I would like to know the number of producers that actually end up really using this to its full potential. Um, I'm not saying that I will, but like... Too much released. I'm sure, I'm sure Ableton people will. Cool. Put 
this shape on there as well, of O2. I don't think you want to sleep to this, but it's pretty cool. Oh, Tom Tom, thanks, that's cool. We should try one, couldn't we? <laughs> Some of the filters are kind of sensitive to to tuning to the tuning. I mean, it just sounds like nonsense at the moment, to be honest. Hi, Dan. <laughs> um, <laughs> is this your first live to why does it look like that? 
<laughs> no, I did do one. I did do the one the other day. Like, but this is like kind of my first. Um, first, I've been messing with Meld a bit off camera and Raw as well. But like, other than that, I haven't really too explored too many of its um, too many of its uh features. But. I mean, the, the one thing I'm looking forward to diving into is raw, really. I mean, this this is often how I kind of like start out making, um, just like learn. You know, every, everyone does this, don't they? With a synth, you know, you just kind of make nonsense noises until you start to kind of. This this might not sound like not nonsense. I don't know. It sounds like like. If you slow the tempo right down, it's like CBB's incidental music or something. Mm. <laughs> Let's slow those LFOs right down. You know, you could use like 10, 20. That's lush. these um Just like lose myself in this really.
adjust the envelope. Like these noise, we're gonna have some rain as well. It's got like rain. I don't know what they call it. What is it? Oscillators? The wave tables or something. Oscillator A type. Duplicate this one and then just change the shapes. Great, this big crush sound.
Sparky up trick. See, uh, yeah, for, it always it starts off at bagpipes and then we're in like ambient music for sleep kind of territory. Oh, I don't want shaper. Map the shimmer. Sick. This could be just like a track, couldn't it? Sometimes when you when you're like making stuff in Ableton or whatever, um, and like you get you make something that's like fuck this is this is really beautiful, <laughs> like and, I, and it's very it's it's very simple, really. very quickly go to shit though, can't it? Can you map that? You can't map that. I don't I don't want this this like just depth fifty. to be a sign stray
that super slow tempo, it's like... Resisting putting it through like the sound toys shimmer. Sorry, the Valhalla. No, you could like just change. I suspect changing the oscillators would do a lot. Can you map the oscillators? You can't like can't map this. great when it does this, it just like goes like down and stuff.
دیگه ناش We can always take this out. Let's put this lot on as 12, maybe. Add another layer. Let's maybe lower. anything like this in it Ned. I find this quite like med like I haven't I haven't made music for I haven't uh, like worked on tracks probably for like 10 days or something and sometimes like it can be nice to just come back to it and just like mess around with with something and have no expectations and then sometimes even like do this and I don't even save anything you know just like I've literally been like just messing around with meld. Raw is really good as well. I can't. I'll, I'll probably do something similar with raw like this. A bit more aggressive. What would Anton, Anton Newcomb do? I suspect he'd, he'd make an out. He'd just record like a 20 minute unedited thing and then release it.
the Invisible Man. Yeah, um, I really, I really liked it. Raw when I messed around with it. starts to trigger other things. I really love the idea of like, you know, like ripples on a pond. When one thing happens, it like more, you know, it starts to like the interference and distortion starts affecting other things. You get like ripples, you know, going off. a good feature the fact you can um I'll stop this for a second the fact you can like uh adjust the volumes and adjust the parameters even though it's mapped to an lfo okay i might just record a take should just record a take of this ambient let's do like a 20 minute thing and i'll re release it on youtube and be like am ambient music to uh sleep to or something okay um, we just want resampling And should we just see what it does? We're at like, the count is going to be a long while though, because we're at 20 beats per minute. In fact, this, right. The reverb makes a huge difference here. I think what we can do we just like bring in different bits you can that wouldn't really be generative though would it to... That could be it, Ned, like the title, Virtual Spa Weekend. With like a like vaporwave image of a pool or something. Virtual Leisure Spa. With Human Synthetics and Ned Rush. as well. 
sometimes though when I'm making these generative things, like when I'm making it, it sounds great, and then when I record it, it just like doesn't quite, doesn't quite live up to what it was. Uh, this will get there though. I think it'll like ch chill out. You just gotta trust it. I think I did. I, I increased this depth quite a lot. So what what we got going on here is you've just got met four instances of melt, pretty much created like everything in one. At the beginning it sounded like uh, bagpipes or dial-up bagpipes, but then we kind of we tapered that out, we, we tempered that, um, and then it kind of just duplicated it. Because everything's modulating, it's all gonna everything modulates differently. If, it, if it's like a hertz rate, particularly if you've got a sample and hold going on, you know, so that's the key to this, like the sample and hold stuff. And then going into a hybrid reverb with sh and shimmer mode in the algorithm. <coughs> um, and then some LFOs, not doing too much, and an, an envelope follow, which is great for like generative ambient stuff because it are. Uh, Like the louder it gets, it starts to like ripple out and cause more effects, you know. So you get all these things happening as a result of other incidences in, in sound. Like we just heard, you know. 
stuff and like new age stuff is like it's texture <laughs> um, what well, Ableton would tell Ableton could interface with your toaster would you want it to really You just need to go and like adjust something. I don't know, adjust this couple of notches up. Same in this one, same in this one. Do a couple of notches, maybe a B, I don't know. I should I should just do an un unattended Ableton set video. Yeah, like State Azure does some really great stuff, like modular gear and things like that. I know I know a lot of people do do them, but I, I really like um, I really like anything that's like simple, really simple, like. We can get like really the, the craziest results from the least variables. Not saying this is that because you could probably do more of just one instance of it. I think of meld. It's just so interesting to listen to. You know, you know, like it's a bit when like Ned when you do your kind of ASMR jams and stuff like that. They're just you could just listen to it go. You know, you could just press generate and 
it's just fascinating to hear what it comes up with. You know, it's like watching something. I feel I, I should have had the visualizer ready for this one. We, we could have just all sat and watched me watch. A, we could have watched the visualizer while oh, this was going on. It feels like it's doing different things now because I slightly adjusted some parameters. Parameters. Yeah, like when, whenever, whenever you record your ASMR jams, I'm like, I think you just want to go on. You kind of get a bit hypnotised by it. I feel. So and so does everyone. You know, it's like. A bit like tripping or something. <laughs> hey, imprint. Yeah. Straight to the mind. Yeah, indeed. It's just, it's just reverb. Really. Effect wise and space wise. Like this stuff, it starts doing things like this, you know, it's deep. later in Greece than it is here. when you just take a texture away, like take the noise away.
Ned Rush, please plug your stream. What? What's happening? Is it? It's not more kicks and friends, is it? I've been so out of the loop this month, really, of stuff with moving, and I was on holiday last week, so. What's happening? Always, pe I'm very happy for people to plug anything. Really. different space now as well oh that sounds good 8 p.m friday ned rush mash up all the classic breaks he's been working on across the, the past month a to z of breaks it's been impressive i've been i've managed to follow them on instagram but a lot of breaks i'd uh, never heard of actually so 8pm Friday, I mash up all the classic breaks I've been cycling and have a naughty party. So, that sounds really good. Have you got an address for us, Ned? Or is it going to be online? Ha, ah, Tom, yeah. It's been freezing it here today. Are you in, are you in the UK? The UK has been cold today. Ned, is there a, a is it scheduled on your YouTube? People can go up and they can go and um, save it and stuff now. Have you got a link? Is it? You're welcome. Very happy to promote anything like that. If you got if you've got a link, just um put it in the chat. I really love the filters on this meld as well. They they sound lovely. We'll just keep it going. Just get this is working, isn't it? I said so we started with the crazy bagpipes and now we're in like snowbean territory. As it gets quieter, just need something to like pick up again on the LFOs and stuff. Southwest Baltic, yeah, I bet. I'm in Birmingham, it was like hailing earlier today, really pelting it down. Maybe this is why, you know, ambient's pretty nice to make in the winter, you can just hole up and just let Ableton run and do its thing. 
I mean, I've, I've often had the idea of doing a video that's like make make a generative ambient set in Ableton, like because I love these love these ideas of like you've got these things. It's almost like a Dylan Baston device. You've got ripples being sent out, and maybe maybe they pick up. Occasionally, they pick up if something else is in the right, you know, in the right area, um, and then that causes another event to happen. It's like a like a kind of chain reaction thing when the circumstances are right but really actually you know, it doesn't even have to be that complicated you can just kind of especially with this pitch quantization this is great because it's kind of running like scalar stuff I mean, you know you can um Good trick in ambient. I hear a lot. It's just you know, just like cut the noise. Like on cryo chamber. I don't know if anyone follows that channel. There's some great ambient mixes on there, but you hear that quite often. And just cut the. You'd be really engrossed, and then suddenly the noise will drop out. different place to half an hour ago and I'm not sure how we got there so li literally like I think this is the this is the key to like a lot of stuff with electronic with music generally is like the small changes can really um can really make the biggest difference like one thing I, I realized when I like was getting into like making bass patches and stuff like that like you've Especially on FM synth, like the small, the 0 0.01 of a turn of the dial can just change the harmonics you're getting and stuff. It can really make a big difference. I think sometimes, you know, there's the tendency when you see a knob for it to either be zero or full. But of course, there's the whole spectrum of degrees in between zero and full. And they can all like, especially when there's lots of other stuff that's happening, it can really affect what's going on like I've, I've definitely I turned the filter down here so that's made you know maybe we could turn this filter up here Thank you. 
Yeah. Meld has got a lot of sweet spots. Yeah, I'm re I'm really enjoying really enjoying it so far. Um, you can't feed samples into you. I mean, you could. You could. You could like. Um. You could have them being triggered somehow. Like one thing you could do is because because we've got this envelope follower, you know, which is like being triggered by the, the gain of the sound or like the, the you know is it it's volume yeah it's definitely definitely volume but the louder the sound gets you know it can trigger other things so you could map this to like the volume of a sample and so that that could kind of come in period uh, periodically as well and you can also like map you can map lfos to the gain of the envelope follower so that um, like ha the sensitivity was increasing and decreasing with with like an up, another modular or variable that's being modulated by a, a separate um, LFO so, so as soon as you start stacking up LFOs things get really kind of random Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I'm picturing a musical equivalent of the film Annihilation, which is fucking mental if you haven't seen it. I have seen it. And yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing of like, uh, you know, DNA being mapped onto other things. So, so that would riff on a sample, or does it only work on sounds it synthesizes itself? Yeah, so it's only... You could definitely attach it to something around a sample, you know using LFOs and envelope followers. Kind of like what was happening in the bass here as well. So you could like, you could stick a sampler in here with a sound in it, and like say, you could map the envelope follow to the volume of the sample and just have the sample playing on like loop or being triggered by the same MIDI note. Um, you could also do the same with like the pitch of 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 the that bit get a bit crazy though I suspect if you did that, or like the playback speed or some way of um. Doing, doing something strange with the sample, but yeah, easily, easily, totally. That stuff's like really easy to do, actually, in Ableton. That what's hard, what's hard to do is stop it from just going descending into chaos. That's that's difficult because very quickly things can just like you. You can't work out why something is is, is doing what it's doing, you know.
Yeah, we could change these frequencies there. Huh? that frequency that affected another sound and made like the white noise coming louder filter is excellent as well. such a slow tempo as well like everything is um, unfolding a lot slower so it sounds like really long del delays and stuff but it's just because we're at really slow tempo yeah, you could definitely do like bit crushing on a vocal sample or something Ideas you're having Wagon FM about like uh, like it's almost like synesthesia, you know, where you're kind of um, you're dif you're imagining different concepts applying to music, like. Thank you. 
Oof. Yeah. Let's let the reverb fade out. <coughs> yeah, I feel a bit spaced out after that. Mm, silence. There we go. That was like a generative ambient jam, all with meld. I think I bounced that out. I just Might just put that on Bandcamp or something. How long is it? Nice. 50 minutes. I think you'd want a bit of a fade in, probably. Like that. save that twenty four. Um, let's give it a better title than that. Annihilation. Nice. Twenty. <clears throat> Just let this do its thing and then I think I will export it. Probably would just export that with um like to and just normalize it. I probably wouldn't bother mixing that or anything because there's just, you know no point. Um, you know could could just normalize that. Do it as a wav, and if it's any good, I might just uh, put it out. Um. Just do a wav. Yeah, with Diver. That's going to take a while to export though, because it's like 50 minutes. Yeah, there we go. That's that's kind of like how um, how to make a generative, largely generative, very lightly user controlled. Uh, Ambient patch with meld in Ableton 12. I think I'm going to call it a night there, people, because my voice is going. It's been a struggle to talk tonight anyway, really. But yeah, that was pretty good. That felt decent.
started started off like crazy bagpipes um or like dial up tone but you know when you start adding reverb and tweaking the control you just got to push through that bit everything always sounds a bit like that you know it's like when you start making bass patches and they just sound like a a squawk or something you've you've just got to carry on you know um the aim of the game is experimentation really and if you're going to be experimenting then you you never quite know where you're going to you know where you're going to go or where you're going to end up so yeah i think i'll come back to me while that exports pretty quick we're almost halfway there um yeah four instances of meld uh i can't switch over now but just four instances of, of meld just with um the l making use of the pitch quantization which i love and i'm going to definitely be using that all the time because um that is just yeah so cool i could see that being really great for like new agey stuff and and jungle as well you know and like well anything <laughs> Yeah, okay. Just gonna shout out my patrons again. Thanks everyone. Thanks to everyone in the chat for being so bulliant and keeping it going. Yeah, sorry I can't do longer this evening. I just my voice is going badly. Um but yeah. Hope you all have a lovely Easter or uh if you get a break. Um, and I will be on next week, if not before. Shout out to all my patrons and supporters. Thanks very much for everyone who supports me on there. All that uh, good stuff is in the description. Uh, lots of good stuff on Patreon. I recently did my latest video in the um, Make Your Own Ambient Jungle live set series on melodics and making melodic patterns, generative melodic patterns. So if you want to check that out, it's on Patreon. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and good night. You can find some time to make some music.